Welcome back to Business Strategy as a Scientific Skill. My name is Deborah Dauber, and in this lecture, I'll be walking you through the Environmental Assessment Toolkit. By the end of this class, you'll be able to describe commonly used tools for environmental assessments, understand benefits of doing the analysis, identify which tool applies best in a given setting, and finally, use one or more of these tools to describe the operating environment of a scientific enterprise. Let's start by revisiting the definition of strategy. In an earlier lecture, we defined strategy as being how a scientific enterprise plans to conduct activities in order to achieve a set of overarching goals. Here's how this breaks out when an enterprise is actually developing a strategy. They'll start by thinking about their current state. What are their mission and values? They'll do a little internal assessment and think about what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what their core capabilities are. And of course, they'll also do an environmental assessment where they think about their operating environment, whether that be a market or a research environment, anywhere where they plan to operate and achieve their goals. Then they'll think about their desired state. What's their vision and what are their long-term objectives? Or put another way, where do they want to be at the end of the strategy period? The strategy is then simply a set of objectives that are prioritized and written in detailed form that tell the enterprise how to get from their current state to their desired state. Today, we're going to focus in on tools that help with that environmental assessment. So why do we need tools to evaluate the environment? It turns out environmental assessments are incredibly complex. Let's take this enterprise that wants to sell this product. Well, of course, first they're going to think about their customers. Customers can be an incredibly simple group, but they can also be very complex. In the pharmaceutical industry, customers include patients, doctors, hospitals, public payers, private payers, and any one or more of these can combine together to make a decision about how a patient is treated. So the customer set is incredibly complex. The next set of stakeholders a company might think about is the distributors. How do you get your product to your customers? This could be as simple as the click of a button if you're selling software, or may involve shipping, storage, distribution, resellers, and any one or more of those stakeholders could be critical to your strategy. You also have to think about suppliers. Are your suppliers consistent or inconsistent? Is there a seasonality to your supply? Do you need to think through the supply and how you get your supplies in order to make your product? Competition. Of course, there are direct competitors, especially if you're in a commercial industry, other companies trying to sell products to meet the same need you're trying to meet. But also, competitors can be a little more indirect than that. It could be any option out there that your customers may choose instead of your product in order to meet their needs. So competition is, of course, a really critical piece to think through in developing your strategic plan. And then there are a series of forces that are indirect, not necessarily tied to any one stakeholder, but nonetheless affect your operating environment. This could include regulatory agencies, economic trends, technology trends, anything that affects your ability to achieve your goals. So as you can see, there are a lot of things to think about in an environmental assessment, and this is where the tools come in. Assessment tools are a framework. They help you to facilitate conversations, organize your knowledge, and maintain focus as you think through your environment. Today, we're going to talk about three different tools used in environmental assessments, the SWOT, the PEST, and the Four Corners. Let's start with the ubiquitous SWOT. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And they're arranged in a grid. And as you can see, the columns refer to whether an attribute is positive or negative, And the rows refer to whether it's internal or external. Let's take an example SWOT. Let's say I'm a pharmaceutical company, and I want to sell product X. I'm going to think through my own attributes for this SWOT. What are my strengths? Well, my product is very convenient. I'm pleased with this. The patient can choose between oral or subcutaneous formulations, whichever works best for them. We were also the first to market, and we have broad approvals. And because of that, we have a lot of market share and very high awareness. These are all attributes we can take advantage of in our plan. We have some weaknesses, though. Our efficacy is perceived by our customers to be weaker than that of the competition. And we're also missing data in a key patient set. And those two weaknesses are attributes we have to think about compensating for in our plan. Also, our product requires fasting before administration, which makes it a little less convenient than we'd like it to be. We also have some opportunities. We've been working in our labs, and we have a new, more convenient formulation that will help patients to have to dose less often. We can take advantage of that launch to help talk to patients about something new. 
We also, because we've been out in the market for such a long time and we have such a large share, we have fantastic relationships with our distributors. And we may choose to leverage those to try to get better deals, better contracts in place. And finally, we've been thinking about doing a DTC, or direct-to-consumer campaign, that would allow us to capture new patients. Finally, let's think about the threats. Well, unfortunately, our competitor has also been hard at work, and they are getting ready to launch a new product of their own that will be both more efficacious and more convenient than ours. So that'll be a threat to our market share when they do that launch. Also, our customers have been increasingly dissatisfied with our price increases. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, in three years, our patent is going to expire. And we need to start thinking about how much money we want to invest in this program and when is the right time to just kind of let it go until the generic erosion hits us and we lose those revenues. So as you can see, as I work through the SWOT, even now I'm starting to think about ideas for where my strategy needs to go. But then when do you use a SWOT? Well, the benefits of the SWOT are that it's widely applicable and well understood. It's a fantastic tool if you want to walk into a meeting and start getting your whole team onto the same page quickly. Drawbacks, it's a little bit less comprehensive in a dynamic market. There's nothing to say you can't consider trends and regulatory or economic uh, factors when you're doing your SWOT, but it doesn't explicitly call for them, and you really have to think that through if you're using the SWOT. The ideal setting is in stable markets where co competition is the most important environmental driver. And in fact, SWATs are used quite commonly in the pharmaceutical industry. Before I leave the SWAT, I want to also point out, not only is this an environmental assessment tool, it's also fairly commonly used for internal assessments as well. Our second tool we're going to talk about today is the PEST. Pests are really useful for evaluating environmental forces. And for pests, I'm going to take a more academic approach to describing each of these forces. The forces we're looking at are political, economic, social, and technological. Let's think through what this might mean for a lab, particularly a lab doing some cutting edge research. Well, political, what's the regulatory environment? And what are the trends? Who are the congressional advocates or detractors? This might be particularly important if you're stay doing some stem cell research, and you want to know if you're going to be able to continue to operate in an increasingly conservative environment. Economic trends. What are the budgets of your funder or funders? And are those budgets likely to increase or decrease over the coming years? Also, what are the institutional finances, the institution in which your lab is based? What kind of constraints do those finances put on your lab? Social. What are the public perceptions of your technology? Not just the overall general public, but also your scientific community. What are the hot research areas? And what kind of articles would make your peers and your colleagues most excited to see published? And finally, technological trends. What kind of available research tools and supporting sciences there that you can build upon? And also, what are competing technologies and some of the competing labs that you need to stay aware of as you embark upon your research program? When would you use a pest? Well, clearly, the PEST gives a very nuanced consideration of influences from indirect stakeholders, and can, it can capture unknowns in a changing landscape. Drawbacks, there is somewhat less familiarity. So if you bring it out in a group, you might need to take some time to explain it to them and talk them through it. It's also unhelpful when the PEST forces themselves are constant and the same for all competitors. You'll spend a lot of time churning and not really creating anything useful. So the ideal setting for the PEST tool is when there's new technology or technology pushing social norms, when there's an unknown or untested regulatory environment. And here we have a couple headlines. For instance, CRISPR work or growing human replacement organs in animals. These are areas where these scientists, whether explicitly or informally, have probably thought through some of these forces before they started in on their research. Our third and final tool that we're going to talk about in this course is the Four Corners tool. And Four Corners is really useful for getting inside of the head of a competitor or a stakeholder. Using the Four Corners tool, you think through a stakeholder using four different parameters. The drivers, the strategy, their assumptions, and their capabilities. Let's walk through each of those. Drivers. What is this enterprise's goals and values? What is their culture? How are they organized? What's their philosophy? Basically, how do they make decisions and what's important to them? Second, their strategy. How have they described their strategy? What kind of investments have they made? What kind of relationships do they have? How successful have they been? Are they likely to continue on with the same course of strategy? Or are they likely to think about changing it? Assumptions. What do they assess their own strengths and weaknesses as? How do they assess the market? Do they think they're strong in a strong market or weak in a strong market? How might that affect their strategy? 
And finally, their capabilities. What kind of assets and competencies does this company have? How adept are they to make changes if they need to in their strategy? How might this affect their ability to be nimble in the market? So clearly, as you've seen, the Four Corners is a really useful tool for creating an in-depth profile of another stakeholder and really anticipating their strategies. Some drawbacks are that it is a lot of work, and it captures only one competitor at a time or one stakeholder at a time. So if you're interested in multiple stakeholders, you do have to do the work for each one separately. The ideal setting for Four Corners is anticipating competitive strategy, particularly in the absence of data, really getting in the headset of these other stakeholders. An added little bonus is if you're looking for a job, you can use Four Corners to evaluate a potential employer and really think through where you think their strategies are going to go and how you feel about that. So let's revisit now the structure of strategy. In this lecture, we've been exploring several tools that help with the environmental assessment for an enterprise, and to some extent, the internal assessment as well. These tools are used all the time in a corporate setting by commercial groups, strategy groups, corporate development groups, and could also be applied very well in a lab setting by leaders of a lab group or groups. I want to also point out that these tools are really useful for you personally as you plan your career or your research plan to think through what your own personal strategy is. And that brings us to the completion of this lecture on Environmental Assessment Toolkit. At this point, you should now be able to describe commonly used tools for environmental assessments, understand benefits of doing the analysis, identify which tool applies best in a given setting, and use one or more tools to describe the operating environment of a scientific enterprise. Thanks for joining me today.